well, the obedience of Abraham was top-notch. Genesis 22, and God invited Abraham to come to offer Isaac as an offering. It was a difficult thing, very difficult thing. This is a son he has waited for years, more than, a, more than two decades. And now this son is here, and God requires of him again to offer him as an offering. That was a very difficult thing. But the Bible says, and Abraham left early in the morning to go to the mountain of Moriah to offer Isaac as a burnt offering, Isaac as an offering to the Lord. And he left his house with Isaac bearing the wood. He was carrying the fire and his servants and some donkeys. And when they reached the foot, the foot of the mountain, and he told his servants, you wait here as my son and me go up there to worship. And when we are done worshiping, we will be back. Amen. And as they went to the mountain, the son, the lad, the boy, asked his father, Daddy, we have wood here. I see we have fire. Where is the sacrifice? Where is the offering? Where is the lamb for the sacrifice? And Abraham would tell him, Son, God will provide. And on reaching the, the, the mountain top, and he prepared the altar, and he took Isaac, his son, and he laid him on the altar. You know, even as he was ready to drive his knife onto the flesh of the son, Bible says the angel of God called from heaven. He said, no, Abraham, don't harm your child. Look behind. There was, there was a ship. There was a ram, a big one that was caught in the thicket. And Abraham would offer the ram to the Lord as an offering instead of Isaac. And lo and behold, they came down uh, as he had said by faith that we will be back. Amen. We will be back. You see, whatever, whatever you're confessing by faith, amen, it will happen someday. It will happen someday. Amen. And so God called again on the second time. He said, Abraham, because you have obeyed, because you did not withhold your, own, your one and only son, but rather you gave him as an offering, because Abraham was not joking. He was killing that son for God. Because you have obeyed, Abraham, in blessing, I will bless you. And in multiplying, I will multiply you. Now, this is what I'm, I've come to realize. That was the highest level of obedience. Because you have obeyed. That was so top-notch. No man has ever attained such a level of obedience. In Genesis chapter 17, when Abraham believed in the report of God, that his seed would be like the star of the, of the sky or like the sun of the sea. When he believed, it was uh, imputed on him righteousness. It was accounted for him righteousness. All right? So Abraham had already received the righteousness of God. And here in Genesis 22, he is displaying the highest level of obedience. And God says, in blessing, I will bless you. Friend, the righteousness of God and the obedience to God attracts God's blessing. But now, what will I do if I don't have the strength, the ability to attain such a level of obedience to God? Such a level of righteousness to God? Because I need those blessings, Lord. That's why Jesus came. When Jesus came, the son of Abraham, he took the form of a human being. Amen. Bible says he was faithful in the house of God. He was faithful in all, in all he did. Amen. There's nothing that Jesus did out of his own will. Whatever he had the Father, he did. There's nothing that he spoke out of his own will. Whatever he had the Father, he spoke. Amen. Jesus was faithful. Jesus lived rightly. Even before the throne of judgment, Pilate said, I found nothing in this man that is worthy for him to die. He was so faithful and he was so righteous and he took my curse on him, on himself and all my infirmities. The Bible says, while I was still without strength, he died for me. He took 
all upon himself. And he, too, he was made a curse for us. He was made sin for us. And he died on that tree that day. Amen. And today, he's become our righteousness. When you believe in Christ, my friend, when you place your faith in the righteousness of Jesus, when you place your faith in the righteousness of Christ, amen, amen, Jesus becomes your righteousness. Jesus becomes our righteousness. And such righteousness attracts the blessing of God. Remember, there are two kinds of righteousness. There is our own righteousness, which will make you interact with people. But that doesn't qualify you to receive the blessing of God. That is nothing before the Lord. Our own righteousness is like filthy rags. Amen. The righteousness of God that comes to us by Christ Jesus gives us the right standing before the Lord. Amen. It's for the God of heaven and earth. Praise the name of the Lord. So funny. I mean, so fine, so good, so sweet to know that Christ is made, is become the righteousness of God in me. And whatever I do, and he says, even when praying, pray in my name. Pray, because if I attempt to approach God, I mean, on my own works, by my own righteousness, I will not win his favor. I will not win his favor. But if I come in Christ Jesus, okay, let me show you something. And then we wind, it, we wind this up. One day Isaac called Esau, because he wanted to bless him. Okay? But Jacob would come and take that blessing. The Bible says, Rebekah, the mother, he put on Jacob, you know, the raiment of Esau. And so Jacob smelt like Esau. But his hands were smooth. So the mother took skins of the animal. I mean, and he wrapped the hands of Esau. So that when he came, the father would say, your voice, because he was blind, your voice is like Jacob's. But if I touch your skin, is Esau's. And so he blessed him. Amen. He blessed him with the blessing of Abraham. He told him, blessed is he who blesses you. And he who curses you is cursed. And he blessed him there. But he blessed him because of the skins. Sometimes I sit and wonder, supposing, because he already knew that was Jacob. Because the voice of Jacob was Jacob's. Supposing the mother would have not put the skins, that would turn to be a curse. Oh my God. Today I am blessed because of Jesus. Today my prayers are answered because of Jesus. Today I am favored by God because of Jesus. It is because of Jesus, my brother. Without Jesus, we are nothing. Without Jesus, we are nothing. Hallelujah. It is because of Jesus. It is because of his death. It is because of his offering that he gave, an offering that was without blemish on that tree of Calvary. Jesus, thank you for saving me. Thank you for saving me and for reconciling me back with God. And today I have an open heaven in Christ Jesus. Blessed in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. That is the beauty of salvation. Salvation is a big deal. It is the real deal. God bless you, friend. I love you. And I really do. Amen.